today we're going to talk about what it does and where you can get it. And, and then hopefully I'd like to show you some of the ways that I'm finding it creeping into my genealogy life. And whether you do family history or not, I know we have people who just kind of walk cause, watch because they love the tech stuff. That's cool. We're going to, you can use this for so many different things. And in fact, I'm going to show you some of the ways I'm using it that isn't genealogy related as well. So do you remember in episode 23, we were talking about Google Photos? So Google Lens is kind of working in Google Photos. That's what I mean when I say if you watch that episode, if you gave uh, Google Photos a look or a try, you've probably already used Google Lens. Now remember, we showed how um, you put some photos in Google Photos. You don't have to put all your photos there, but if you put some of them or just your family history photos or, or whatever, you can tap in search and it will give you this list of faces. It's going to start grabbing faces. That's what Google Lens is doing. It's grabbing faces out of your photographs. And so here's a lot of faces from many of the photographs that I have in my collection. When I click on my grandmother's face, remember, it, Google Photos found my grandmother Burkett in so many different images. And when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, well, that's not right. But I realized she's in the photograph behind me. And so the picture of me with her in the photo behind me, Google Photos, Google Lens, found her in that picture. It found her in the collage. It found her every single one of these images has some portion of my grandmother's face, including videos. So I've put some of my family history videos into Google Photos, and there she is. This one blows me away. It's half of her face, and it's still new that that was my grandmother and it matched her up. So, and here she is. It was a snapshot of my Google Photos in my phone. It had my grandmother's face and it, and it saw her. So this is a really powerful tool. And, you know, we talk about facial recognition software that's out there. That's all being developed. There's machine learning that kind of comes into play here and artificial intelligence. Google Lens is part of that. And when you think about what we did last week with uh, Newspaper Navigator, that too was using this kind of artificial intelligence, they call it their AI trainer, to be able to spot photos and deliver them to you. And in fact, you know, I was thinking about the Newspaper Navigator that we did last week in episode, uh, gosh, this is 27, so that was 26. Remember, you could train the newspaper navigator. You could tell it, I like more of this, give me more of that, and it starts to train it. Well, Google Photos is the same thing right here. Is this the same person? It's going to spot images and ask you to train it. And I say, yes, you found a photo of my grandmother well into her 60s and also her high school um, photograph. So we can also train it to say, nope, that's not the right person. So we're already doing the training. We're already using machine learning and Google Lens. And uh, that happens here in Google Photos. So where else can we find Google Lens? Is it anywhere else? If you have an Android smartphone, you have it built in in many different ways. Now, I myself have an iPhone. So I'm going to just focus on the ways that everybody can access Google Lens. But if you're an Android user, do a little Google searching on that because you have a lot of different ways that you can use Google Lens. But for all of us, no matter what kind of smartphone you have, uh, if you have an app store, you can go in and download the free Google Photos app and the free Google Search app. So we're going to focus on those today to show you what they can do. And it's pretty jaw dropping. <laughs> I think it is. So on mobile, we, let's start with the Google Photos app, because we've already talked about using Google Photos. And if you're using it on your desktop, you're going to want to get the free app on your phone so that you can access it and also be able to get some of the images from your phone, should you want to, into Google Photos as well. And then Google Lens will be applied to it. So here's an example. So one of the things that Bill and I did this summer was we did a little renovation in the front part part of the house. And 
this section had gotten so overgrown. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was ripping bushes out of the front yard and poor my cat, my poor ginger cat. She's wandering around going, what's happening? All my hiding spaces are gone. <clears throat> so this is what's left. And we've cleared everything out. And so we're thinking about kind of some things we might want to put in here for next season. But one of the things I did was I moved this three-tier pot from the backyard into the front yard. It's It was hidden away. I never even planted anything in it. So when I got it, I said, I said to Bill, when you're at Home Depot, grab me a whole flat of something, you know, some kind of flower that you think is pretty. <clears throat> so he brought these in and I planted them and I love them. They, they, they're perfect for Texas. Uh, they love the heat. They open during the day, they close in the evening. But what if you wanted to know what kind of flower they were? Because I didn't know there weren't any tags in the little containers. Google Photos can tell us. So here's the photo I took with my phone in Google Photos. And when you pull up the photo in Google Photos, you see the Google Lens icon on every photo. Tap it. Look what it did. It says, oh, that's moss rose purslane. And that's exactly what it is. I asked my neighbor who knows flowers and she said, oh yeah, that's what, <laughs> it's purslane. So Google Photos, the photograph was already in Google Photos. So when I opened the app, I selected the photo you always see the Google Lens little icon at the bottom. Tap it. It tells you what it is. And if you click through to the search results, you're going to find everything you ever wanted to know about the type of flower that you're looking at. So if you're a gardener of any type, it specifically can identify pretty much any plant that you take a photograph of. Pretty amazing, isn't that? So it's going to connect you to information on the web. And so this just kind of cracks open the door to, well, what other ways could we use this kind of technology that would help us when we're doing our family history work? So here's another way. I started using this when Google Lens first came out. And of course, I travel all over the world and I speak at conferences and I'm constantly handing out my business card. And what I discovered was... <clears throat> People were giving me their business cards too at conferences. So I grab them all and I like to put them into uh, Google Photos. Well, Google Photos plays hand in hand with Google Photo Scan. Now, if you have not used this app, put it on your list because Google Photo Scan is another free app. And here's the beauty of it. So my card, can you tell, has a little shine. And that shine, just like if you took a, um, a photograph of a picture in a frame, that glass is going to give you glare, right? So if I just took a regular photograph of this, I'm going to get the glare. And it's funny because this special little card actually has fake glare on it to make it look like it's an iPhone. I know. So you want to be able to take a photograph of it so that you're not going to get the glare, whether it's this or it's a photograph in a frame. So Google Photos is perfect for that. I'm going to show you how this works and you can access it. Once you have that on your phone, you can access it through Google Photos. So Photo Scan is going to take the picture to get a better picture than just your camera would. And then we're going to, it's going to automatically jump over into Google Photos and give us access to lens. Have I confused you yet? <laughs> I, I think I'm confusing me. Let's see what this looks like. So here's the, the card. Okay. We're going to go into Google Photos. I want to show you how you get to Google Photo Scan if you don't want to open that app first. If you're already in Google Photos, you tap the three lines. At the bottom, you'll see that there's a Photo Scan app on your phone, and it's so it will be connected. Tap that. It automatically opens Photo Scan. When you take a picture, look at the four dots. You move your phone and you take one photo in each corner. Photo scan automatically knits them all together perfectly in one image that generally will eliminate the glare. So you can see that there's fake glare actually in the coloring of my card, which is not a great example, but it works beautifully and it works great with pictures and frames. So I'm gonna go back into Google Photos and there's my picture. Now I have the Google Lens icon at the bottom of the picture. If you tap that with a business card, it's like magic. 
this is what happens. Automatically, it has converted everything that was on your business card into actionable buttons. Can you believe this? So now it spots it. It says, hey, you want to call this person? Just tap this button. You can call them. Add a contact. It's going to give you related searches. Tap it. Oh, looks like she's got a podcast. Tap that. It's going to take you over to Google and give you the podcast in the search results. You're literally taking a flat business card with type text and you're turning it into this interactive image in Google Photos so that you can call people, text people, add them to your contacts, go search for the stuff that's talked about. If their web address is on it, it's going to take you to their website. Pretty amazing. I use this a lot actually. Now, again, let your mind just jump out of the box because this is just one example. So if this is one example, what other kinds of things are you constantly taking pictures of or trying to rewrite everything down on a pad of paper that has information on it? <clears throat> Excuse me. That you may, <clears throat> goodness, sip. Okay. You might have other kinds of things. Now, keep in mind, I, I know you're a genealogist, so you're thinking about, oh, I've got these documents. Okay. Handwritten stuff isn't probably going to work too well, but if it's typed, it will work. Okay, so think about stuff, whether it's your everyday life or your family history work life, what, what other stuff has information on it that can be done in the same way. Anything that has a phone number on it is going to work for this. It's pretty cool. Are you having fun yet? I'm having fun. I'm having fun telling you about it because I just think this stuff is so geeky and fun. Okay. So that's the Google Photos app. And we used the Google Photo Scan app in conjunction with it. So that's cool. Let's get into the Google Search app. You probably already have this on your phone, right? You have the G app. Now, if you don't see it, if you're an Apple user, I'm not sure anymore. I, I've had this so long, I don't know if it's a default app or, app or not. If you don't see it, go to your app store, type in Google Search, and it will either tell you open it, which means it's already on your phone, or it'll say download it. So either way, you're going to want to get this on your phone. Okay, so Google Lens is now built into the Google Search app. So what can it do? Well, first, when you open the app, you see in the search box, we've seen the microphone for a while, we know we can dictate searches, we can tell it as long as we've activated the microphone on the on the phone. We can speak our search and it will search for it. But Google Lens gives us that access to use our camera built into our phone within our search. So this is just like google.com on your computer, but we're talking on the phone. So we're going to uh, tap the Google Lens app and let's see what it can do. Here's a non-genealogy application. So this is a photograph. Have you seen this photo? Where is it? It's behind me. It's my daughter, Lacey, and um, she's my middle of three daughters. So this was uh, us one day, and we were all dressed up that day, and you say, oh, I'm over at Lisa's house. Oh, I love that purse. Where'd you get that purse? Okay, so we're going to go to the Google app, tap Lens, and we're going to point our phone at the picture, okay? And we're going to point it right at that purse. Oh, there's a dot tap it. There you go. <laughs> you can buy the purse. You can buy it online right now. No, <laughs> it's a Michael Kors purse. I saw this pop up. and I'm like, Oh, I got a good deal at the outlet store. I didn't pay that much money. Um, but it's a beautiful royal blue Michael Kors purse. And it gives you the exact make and model. It'll show you the newer versions. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It grabbed it right out of the picture. So what, what else is behind me? My typewriter. This old typewriter we found in the garage, my mother-in-law's garage after she passed away, and it belonged to her father, Sidney Mansfield. So you might remember Sidney Mansfield from the Centennial Syncopators from Salem, Oregon, that we talked about in uh, episode six. Here's some fun, okay? You guys, this is an interactive Hey, you're in chat. Let's get really interactive. Grab your phone. 
okay? And tap and open the Google search app. There's, oh, there's mine. You could also do this. Just open your camera app. This will work too, but the Google Lens will work. Let's do Google Lens, tap Lens in the search, hold it up to the QR code over here. And it will take you, whoops, it'll uh, tap the little button. It'll take you to our site. Even with your phone, if you've been out to a restaurant recently, you've noticed they're not giving you paper menus anymore, right? And typically they'll have a QR code on the table or they'll show you a card. You open your, your camera app on your phone and just point it at the QR code. So this is a little interactive video today. And that'll take you to episode six if you missed it. So you can learn more about Sydney. Not only did we talk about Sydney in terms of uh, searching for him with Google, but we also used him in a project that I made this huge poster of the Centennial Syncopators. But I digress. Okay, so this is the typewriter. And if you look at it, you think, oh, well, what kind of typewriter is that? We're going to go to the Google search app. And we're going to tap the lens icon and just point it at the typewriter. Okay. Notice it's not only scanning the image, it's scanning all of the text that appears on it. It's a vintage Royal manual typewriter. Here's where you can purchase one yourself, whether it's on Etsy or it's on eBay or it's on Amazon, wherever it is. Uh, if you first, you're going to typically see the ability to purchase the item. If you continue to go through, you can do additional searches and learn the history of this item. How old is it? Um, all the background, who created it, the patent, the whole nine yards. So you can go up here to the search. Once you've got the initial search and type in the word history, it'll refocus away more from the shopping items and get you into the actual history of the item. So if you've got something in your house and you haven't really looked into, you know, you know you inherited it, but what's the background on this item? This is a way, a fun way to learn more about it really easy without hardly any typing at all. So here's another item. Okay, so I was going through um, Grandma Burkett's scrapbooks and I came across this cool thing. Now, I think I was using an example, the reason I got focused on this was I was doing a presentation and I was looking for examples on YouTube. <clears throat> and I think if you've seen my Google search methodology uh, video, it's part of premium membership on my website. I show this email that I got from somebody and she was talking about her dad was into drag racing. And we found she found an old video on YouTube and it's him on the on the speedway in the 1960s. It's amazing. Okay, so we teach a lot about how to use YouTube. But it got me when I saw this in grandma's scrapbook, I was like, Oh, wow. Okay, cool. This is the official program from the San Jose Speedway. Um, I'm not sure what year doesn't say right on the cover. But I know that um, Oh, and then inside it says 1930. So my grandmother's brother in law, uh, as you can see here was uh, Dick Loveland was a racer for many years. So I thought, well, I wonder what Google Lens could help me with this. So open the lens, the Google search app, point at the item, tap the button. It found a copy of the same exact brochure online. Now, why is this helpful? When I tapped this, I found this guy in his website, he is like the number one expert on old racing specifically in California and in specifically San Jose. And there is the same brochure. So if I want to learn more about it, I want to find out if there's an archive of photographs somewhere, I want to know if there's rosters of guys who drove cars and get more records uh, on Dick Loveland. This is the guy to ask. And within seconds of using my phone and pointing it at this brochure, I've got that information way faster than me trying to do typing words into Google search and figuring out what's the right thing to put in here to try to find the right search results. Visual, and, I, and I've talked about this a lot in a lot of my, my presentations, visual is so much faster when it comes to search. Uh, in my Google Books class, we talk about this. Um, that video is on premium membership. If you do the visual version of looking at the results, you're going to be able to scan much faster to get things that you want to find in many cases. 
So it's kind of a strategy to help speed up your genealogical research when, you know, the one thing we're all hurting for is more time, right? So anything that saves a bit of time is kind of a nice thing. All right, so there's the search feature. Let's tap this, tap Google Lens, and I opened up the brochure and I'm, look at how it, see it's kind of trying to grab text that appears. When I zeroed right in, I saw a name. I wanted to see if I could learn more about it. Could this tell me any more about individual people? If I tap the button and see that little bar, now you can kind of select which text you want. You just drag it, just like you would when you're you know, typing a text or something. It searched on his name and found him in the 1940 census. <laughs> this is so cool. I mean, that's pretty cool. So you can log into your ancestry account and it, it would take you and you could go and look up George Theobald. And of course, as I scroll down, then I find more information. And from there, I could certainly add to my search. I just thought it was really cool to kind of test this theory of when you're looking at documents, you're standing in a um, library, you know, could you point at something and just get a whole lot more information really fast? It's kind of cool to know. And the other thing to keep in mind as we're talking about this is that there's what it can do today, but then as fast as machine learning is moving and it's learning way, way, way faster than we will ever learn as humans, think of what this technology may be able to do for us in the future. <clears throat> and that's what we want to really keep our eye out for is what's coming, what can it do for us, and be looking for those opportunities, particularly in our research. So here's another item. <clears throat> now this is a, I didn't know what it was at first when I first got it. It was in two pieces. And I looked at them like, well, they, they kind of go together. <laughs> you know, it, it looked like something was missing. And then um, we showed it to Bill's godfather. And he looked at it and went, oh, he's an engineer. And he, he just twisted it around, put it together. And it's a shelf. It looked like some kind of a shelf. So that's pretty cool. So I had Bill install this uh, on the wall in my bedroom and I put a little jar of buttons on it and it's kind of fun by my sewing machine. This belonged to my great grandmother, Grandma Burkett's mother, Louise Nikolowski. And if you've followed me at all, you're familiar with the name Louise Nikolowski. She's, um, she was from Prussia. So I thought, I've n I had done many searches on this shelf. I have looked up for iron shelves and planter shelves and ornate, and I've done visual search. I really could not find a specific exact match for this shelf online. And it was kind of frustrating because I'm like, I should know how to Google and I just really couldn't nail it. So I really didn't know exactly what the purpose of the shelf was. I assumed that it was kind of a plant shelf and it very likely could have been used as a plant shelf. So. Last night, as I was putting this together, I thought, I'm going to go back. Okay, so I'm going to move away the one I just did. And I'm going to point my camera in Google search, the lens, take a little, you know, press the button. The first image is the exact same shelf. And the fourth one as well. I was really blown away. I was blowing myself away with this because I tried so hard to find this through word text type searches and with not any luck. So the first one brought me to this site. This person sells all these different little pieces. So it does look like it's a piece of something. Um, so we can go back and we can look at the other one here down below. Tap that one. Then it gives you a little button to visit the site. And this goes to Antiques Navigator. And what's beautiful about these antique sites, even if they're selling them, they're gonna tell you so much more about what these items are. So as I scroll down, they had a lot of stuff for sale, but I was really had my fingers crossed that this person who's probably appraised it, figured out what it was, put it up for auction, they're gonna be able to tell me what this thing was really used for. Antique cast iron golden E stove, or range warming shelf. So originally, this shelf was probably next to great grandmother's stove range versus maybe later she used it for a plant shelf. <laughs> I think my grandmother probably did. But how cool to be able to figure that out. 
And it even does that. I think that's so neat. I love that little shelf. It's so cute. And now I love that I know the history. And it really amazes me that Google Lens could do in seconds what I really hadn't been able to do in, you know, a half an hour of searching on my computer using regular google.com search. In fact, I got so determined to figure out what kind of shelf that was, I went to Ancestry and I got into their their whole Sears catalog, which goes way back. Uh, they have all the old Sears catalogs and I went through them and went through them. And of course, I'm looking for shelves and plant shelves and nothing looked like it. So it'll be interesting to go back and see in the stove section <laughs> if that appears. You might notice uh, that this person on the left is somebody you may have seen before, Margaret Scully. So in episode 18, we talked about my other great great grandmother, Margaret Scully, and did a lot of research in Ireland and finally made some huge strides on who her parents were and what county they were from. If you missed that, take your phone, open. I think it's even simpler when it comes to QR codes. Just open your camera app and hold it up to the QR code and it would take you there. You'll see a little pop down. It says, oh, you want to go to this website? You can go to this website. So you can learn more about the Irish research that I did. I did a consultation with an, an Irish expert and then I did a follow-up segment uh, episode on all of the the filling in of all the gaps that I was able to do once I had the, these key missing pieces. So I love this photograph. It's four generations. And what's interesting is when I got this copy of it, it came with the typed caption on it. So I would know who each person was. So I want to show you what Google Lens can do for you in situations like this. So we're going to tap that Google search app and get it close to the picture. Okay, so we're in text mode. You can see there's a little text on the button. And if you tap select all, it'll just grab all the text that it can see through the camera lens and see it highlighted it. You can tap copy text. Okay, so now it's copied it to the clipboard of your phone. I'm gonna go to my notes app and press and hold so I can paste. Now I've instantaneously, instead of typing it all with my chubby fingers on my phone, I can copy and paste it in. Then I could email this over to myself. So it's a way of taking text on a page and turning it into instant type text. And then you could send it to yourself. You can copy and paste it into whatever document. Again, so much faster. Also, if I was at their house and I took a picture of it, um, but I really wanted to make sure that I grabbed all these names that were now on this of people that I had not had names for before. You know, again, I might want that second backup of having the text version as well as the photograph that I would take of somebody else's photograph. So, so many uses for this, as you can see. And gosh, with, with your smartphone or if you have a, a iPad or a tablet, it's going to be able to do all this kind of stuff using the Google search app. Show it. Um, okay. Awesome. I see you've got questions. Bill says you've got questions. So we're going to definitely answer questions at the end. And um, I'm going to show you also how to get um, to the app. In fact, let's talk about it right now. If you don't have the Google search app on your phone, I'm going to open my iPhone, get to my home screen, right? And on the iPhone, there's a blue app with an A app store. Now on Google, I think it's going to be called Google Play. I think that's what the app store is called. And you know what? When you're not sure, I know on an iPhone, you can swipe to the right and there's a search box at the top and I could type in Google search app. So even if you can't find the app store, you could type in app store and it's going to take it to you that spot on your phone. But I'm going to tap the app store. And then on a, on an iPhone again, at the bottom in the menu, I see search. So I'm, they're trying to show me all kinds of apps they want me to get. I don't want these. I'm going to tap search. And now I see here's my search box. I can tap in the search field and type in Google 
search. I'm going to type in Google search. I'll bet you could just do Google. It would probably be the very first app. It is the very first app. There's always an ad at the top. So they want me to get the Amazon app. But here's the Google search app. Now mine says open, and that's because I already have the app on my phone. So if I tap open, it's going to just automatically find wherever it was buried on my phone and go open it. If yours says download, it's because you don't have it yet. So you're going to tap that. And it takes a moment. Sometimes I know on my phone, it'll, it'll ask me for my Apple password to make sure it's me because some apps cost money. This one does not. So when we tap that, it downloads. And then where do we find it? Well, if you're like me and you have multiple pages of apps, I usually go to the last screen. If you just keep tapping, you know, swiping to the left, oftentimes it'll load that app on the last screen, basically in the last position. And then you can move it from there. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's the Google Play Store that you can get apps on Android. So that's how you can make sure that you've got the Google search app on your phone. Once you've got it, then one tap and we can see the little Google lens right there, that icon in our search box. So something else that has come up a lot with Google Lens lately is its ability to do homework. <laughs> That's because a lot of kids have been home and, and doing school from home and doing school online. And so Google really put a push on this. And I just want to show you one element of what the homework feature can do, because it's something that we might be able to apply for ourselves, uh, for family history. But there's lots of other features within homework. I mean, it can do geometry, it can do all kinds of stuff. So here's an example of my grandfather's tombstone. And, uh, you know, one of the math problems that we do is we try to figure out how old somebody was when they passed away. So I'm going to tap the Google search app. And I had jotted the, the dates down on a piece of paper. If you literally just point the camera and tap the button, it will do the work for you. So it tells you, yep, oh, he was 72 years old when he passed away. And you can copy that to your computer. You can copy the text. It's It took handwritten. Did you notice this? Now, I had told you it wasn't going to do very good with handwritten. But I wrote it. I printed it pretty you know, clearly. And it was able to get it. Notice that there's this little tray of little buttons. I think the default tends to be the search one. But if you tap that, and you can just scroll. The, the uh, scholarly hat, that's the homework function. You can see a shopping cart, so it'll shop for stuff. You can see the little drop pin in this um, little row of buttons, these round buttons, and that will search locations. You could take a picture of a location, usually more well-known locations, uh, text, and translate. We're going to talk about translate in a minute. So it did do printed, handwritten uh, writing. And I think this is an example when I was saying about how it's progressing so quickly. I know I've heard that uh, other companies, I think FamilySearch has been working on um, different types of graphics and, and writing and being able to translate those as well and OCR them. So OCR plays into all this as well. The ability to understand a handwritten item. Evernote can do that. The Evernote app and website can do that for notes. So um, as long as right now, as long as it's kind of clear and printed, you could do this um, with a handwritten note. So just kind of fun to know that that's there. If you've got kids in the house, you might have them play with the homework version and do a little Googling on it to see what else it can do for them. Reading. Okay, so I write a column uh, in every issue of Family Tree Magazine. And if you were maybe you couldn't find your glasses, right? That happens to me all the time. Or for whatever reason, you would like Google Lens to read to you. Here's just an example using my column. So we're going to go to the Google search app. And I go to my column here. And I'm going to focus in on this little app obsession. It's about Google Photos. When you tap down below, here's these options just like those circles were. I'm going to text. So I see the little document in the button and tap it. 
That does the initial grabbing of text, but there's a listen button. I'm so obsessed with the Google Photos app less than Can you hear? Google.com slash photos that I devoted an entire chapter to it in the newest edition of my book, The Genealogist's Google Toolbox, third edition, self-published. This little powerhouse organizes and stores all your photos, freeing up precious space on your smartphone. So once you did the search to grab the text, then in the options, remember how we did it with the business card? There were lots of little button options. Well, one of the options in text mode is reading. So if you ever wanted to have it read something to you, uh, maybe you're having trouble. It's low light. When I have trouble in low light sometimes, uh, grab your phone and have it read it to you. Who knew it did all this stuff? Who knew your phone could do all this stuff? I, I didn't. Just putting this together, I learned so much. It's amazing. Okay, so here we talked about there was a translate circle. So there was text, and there was homework, and shopping, and locations. And there's also text, uh, translate. And this is a uh, picture. This is one of uh, Louise Nikolowski's, I believe it's her sister. And it was taken in Ortelsburg, which was East Prussia in the 19th century. So I have a book this book. And I got this years ago. And um, it's of Christ Ortelsberg, but it's all in German. And it talks about her village that she's from. And you can use Google Lens to help you be able to read the book. So we're going to tap and just point your phone at the book. Let's go to the page for Grunwald, which is where they lived. And you can see it's already trying to detect text. I'm going to tap the center button. I'm in search mode right now. Now notice that it already has spotted that this is not English. So it offered me, do you want translate? This is what the round circle, that's what the translate option looks like. Now after searching, we can tap to open this result in Google Translate takes a moment, it's going to process it. There at the top is the German. This is all of it translated. Isn't that amazing? So if you've got some of those kinds of books or documents or PDFs that you get online, you can translate them. You know, none of this is perfect. We've I think I said that at the beginning, I'm going to keep saying it. it's not perfect. But doggone it, it can do it a way better translation than I ever could. And I could um, copy this text. We're going to copy all and then I could go over into my notes app and just paste it or I could paste it into an email to myself. Uh, I think it even gives you the ability to send it through to your computer. So here I've pasted it. It's all in English for me. Just awesome. And if I tap the share button in my uh, notes app on my iPhone, I can send that over to myself or do whatever else I want with it. So kind of cool that you can do, you, it just opens up a whole other world, particularly if you are researching in other countries of being able to do translation. And what, I'm, what we're really seeing here is that initially Google has many different apps, right? Has the PhotoScan app, has Google Translate app. There's a lot of, if you go to your app store and just type in Google, you'll see many different apps. But what we're really seeing here is it all coming together through the Google search app and specifically through Google Lens. So we may end up seeing some of these other apps eventually disappear because they've fine-tuned that technology, brought it over and built it into the Google search app, and you end up with this kind of one-stop shopping Google search app. You can also identify uh, well-known people, probably not your ancestors necessarily, except for maybe in Google Photos, it could match them up. But you could point this at the picture of somebody famous, and it would probably be able to find that person for you. And, and locations, you could point it at a picture of Buckingham Palace. It's going to know it's Buckingham Palace. In the future, I think we will be able to look at all types of locations, no matter what they are. People, whether or not they're famous. Uh, how about even being able to point at a book and just be able to search within the book? Oh, you can already do that. You want to see? This is so fun. Okay. Have you ever been to a conference and you go, oh, I want that book. 
and you're going to buy that book or you're at the library. Oh, I should check that out. Or maybe I should um, do an interlibrary loan. But you don't want to do that when it's a book you already have. And if you're like me, there's a lot of books on your shelves and you don't want to duplicate it, correct? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to know if maybe this book is already available on Google Books for free and I don't need to do that? If you've watched my Google Books presentation, I mean, that's just a whole nother hour of amazing stuff that's in there. Uh, that video is on premium. Google Books has so many books. There's no reason to be purchasing a book or um, going through all the trouble of interlibrary loan if you can already get access to it. So this is my book. <laughs> this is the county history of uh, Randolph County, Indiana. And I paid a lot of money for it many, many moons ago before Google Books. I think it's a reproduction. Pretty sure it's a reproduction. But it's very cool. So would I need to buy that now? Let's go look. Back to the Google search app. Tap the lens. I'm standing in front of my book. Go to the title page, because the title page has the most information about the book, even more than the cover, particularly with old books. Tap my button. History of Randolph County, Indiana by Tucker. <gasps> There's a read now button. My friends, you are reading the book. You are searching within the book. It is completely free. All the chapters are hyperlinked. <laughs> it's all there. So that not only confirmed, I don't need to get another copy of this book, but it actually gave me immediate access to read and search that county history. I just, whoa. Okay, so <laughs> I hope you've had fun with this. I've had so, <clears throat> so much fun with this. Um, and of course, Google is kind of my thing. So I have a book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox. Uh, I put a special coupon together for you guys um, because this book has a lot of search techniques. Um, it has a whole new chapter on Google Photos and, of course, a whole section on Google Books. I didn't even get Google Lens into this book yet, but you've got this video. But it's all these other tools. You're going to learn so much about using them for family history, particularly, but just generally how to use them. And then that's going to trigger now that you know that Lens is available. You're going to be able to tap into all the stuff we're talking about in this book. Um, and if you want to, open up your phone and point it at the QR code. It'll take you right to our store. So that's Google Lens. Now you know. Now you know where it is. And now you know what it can do. And it's so much fun. Let's uh, head back to see where all you guys are. Questions. Okay, so let me see here. I'm seeing some wow. So let me look. I'm going to scroll through really quickly. I don't want to bore you guys, but I want to see if there's questions. Uh, I've just tried this with a postcard in German and it could translate it. Isn't that awesome? I know it is crazy. Janet's like, wow, this is crazy. Um, Lisa, can Okay, Lisa, can this be used to compare photos to determine if they are the same person? Absolutely. Okay, so um, watch the Google Photos version. Now, if you're watching live, when this goes to video, you're going to, um, you can go back and even hit the QR codes. But tomorrow, I will have show notes up on my website with all the links. And uh, you can also just go to genealogygems.com slash elevenses. And there, go watch the Google Photos episode. Um, also, my book goes into real specifics about how to use Google Photos to help identify other people and objects and things in your photos. Also in premium membership, um, there is a class on how to identify old photos and Google Photos is one of the tools that we use. It's using the lens technology to um, assess the face and it's using machine learning to constantly learn. You'll be amazed how quickly it will spot the same face regardless of age, which is just mind blowing in all these different images. And then you can also train it. Remember we talked about kind of the training version like we did in Newspaper Navigator last week. So it will prop up and it will say, 
I've got these two faces. Is this the same person? And you can confirm or say, no, it's not. And you can also, of course, add the name of a person to a face. So then you can start searching by their name and also find these um, faces. So, uh, and Jean Bud says, if, if this could translate old handwriting, that would be amazing. I think that would be on the way because I know that they're working on that um, at places like Family Search. So I wouldn't be surprised. Keep, stay here, stay at 11's. You know, I'll tell you about it first if I hear about it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Questions, questions. Okay. I'm so glad you guys are having fun with this. Oh, China. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lucinda, China patterns. So you take a picture of any China cup that has a particular pattern, uh, particularly the bottom of the cup as well. It's going to show you if that cup is for sale somewhere, if it's available, it's going to help you identify it. That's going to be amazing. Because um, we talked about that one website that does that. And um, this can do it. And it will do it even more extensively, which is amazing. I used Google search to identify the make and model of my great grandfather's new car in 1913. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a perfect um, example for it. <laughs> okay. I'm looking. So I'm going to go back to the very end. If you have an urgent, urgent question, put it in the chat and put question in all caps so I can see it. But um, I see thumbs ups and smiley faces. So I'm hoping that means that you had a really good time and, and you're kind of seeing the potential of the impact that this can have on the work that you do. And for me, it's, um, it's not just the application to family history, but it's really in your life. You know, there's so many other things that you think this could solve this problem, like identifying plants. It also can identify animals. So if you say, oh, that's the cutest little dog. What kind of dog is that? Take a picture of it. <clears throat> It'll tell you the breed. Question, do you know if it will translate from English to other languages? I'm almost convinced it can because we know that Google Translate can do that. And again, complete chapter on Google Translate in the book. But I didn't try it using um, English first, but it's probably not going to prompt you because it, it knows you're an English speech speaker. It knows a lot about you. It's not going to prompt you and say, oh, this text is in English. Do you want this in French? But if you do go through, remember the selections, those little buttons, those little round things, we can tap translate. And I think there you'll be able to say, well, we know you're, you're detecting English. What language do you want? Because we know we can do that on the Google Translate app, uh, excuse me, website. If for some reason, because I haven't tested it, if it doesn't do that, go to your app store and download the free Google Translate app. It does it, absolutely, for sure. And if you're a premium member, watch the Google Books class because I show you how to translate using your phone um, foreign language text from your screen. So that's kind of fun. Can this be done on a home computer? So Marilyn, the thing with that is um, I was looking at that because I figured that might be a question. If by chance you don't have a smartphone, Google Lens is built into Google Photos. So if I only had a desktop computer, I would really be tapping into using Google Photos to accomplish these things for me. Um, it, you don't see the Google Lens icon in the search box at google.com. I have some videos, actually they're, they're very popular, they've been out for several years on image search at our YouTube channel here. So youtube.com slash genealogy gems if you're watching the video replay later. You're right here in the YouTube channel now. I hope you'll click subscribe. If you, if you really like this, please encourage us and click the subscribe button. And then look under the Google playlist or do a search of our channel for Google. I have a Google image search that will show you ways to use pictures to do search, but you're not gonna see the lens icon in the search box. I think really it's gonna be using the Google photos. That's where they're focusing right now, but you know, that can change too. We may see it tomorrow, so who knows. Um, yes, discount code is lens. Thank you, Bill, in all capital letters. And that's 20% off. Question. Uh, I can't get the icon into, oh, it moved. Hang on. Into my search bar. What am I doing wrong? Okay, Bev, I hope that you're using on a mobile device, the Google search app. So not going into, let's say the Safari browser app and typing google.com. 
because that won't do it. We need the Google search app itself on a mobile device, and then you should see Lens. Now it's possible if you don't have in your settings that you're allowing the Google search app to access your camera, it's possible, and I, I have it set up to do that, so I don't see that, but it's possible that would remove the lens icon because it knows you don't have access to it. I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong with that. Um, but that would be one thing I would do. If you're for sure using the Google search app and you're not seeing it, go into your settings, make sure that you're giving this Google search app access to your camera and go back and see if it's there. Oh, great. For me, it detected German and translated to English. Wonderful. I have an iPhone and Google Photos loaded and I'm not finding Google Lens inside of it. I was able to download the Google search and the lens is there. Yes, so in the Google Photos app, what we did was Google Lens is already baked in. That's what it does. That's how it works. So it's already baked in. You don't need an icon. But what we did do in the Google Photos app was we went to the three horizontal lines, the settings little button in the upper left hand corner, and that's where we accessed PhotoScan. So PhotoScan was the way, if I didn't already have the photograph on my camera roll, and I wanted to take a picture and I didn't want any glare, I would use PhotoScan. So that's why we, that was the connection we made was that PhotoScan happened to be in Google Photos. If you don't have a worry about the glare issue, you can just take a photograph of something. It'll automatically, if you have it set up to go into Google Photos, then just open your Google Photos app. You'll see the, the lens icon there. All right, I promise I'm gonna go through all the chat um, and I will answer any other questions that I haven't already answered. I'll do that in our show notes tomorrow. I'm gonna have all the details. I know it was, a, it was a fire hose of Google Lens today, but don't worry because it's going to all be laid out for you at genealogygems.com slash elevenses. Did you like this? Please give it a thumbs up. That is just huge to help other genealogists find us and they are finding us. So I'm so appreciative when you do that. And I wanted to leave you with kind of um, a final thought. So we said at the beginning that... Um, let me go back here. Hang on. So remember when Charlie Brown said, if life were a camera, I'd have to put the lens cap on it. I hope you're feeling a little less like that today. My friends, I hope this is you now, an hour later, after spending an hour with all of us here at Elevens is with Lisa. And um, I just thank you so much when you join us here. It's so much fun for me. I hope it was for you too. God bless you and your family and get out there and do a happy dance. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.